Hey guys, it's Phil with GOA, and today we're going to go over the anti-gun roundtable that Joe Biden and some uh, members of Congress did a couple weeks ago. Let's go. Short by a man with a stolen Glock with 40 rounds, a magazine with 40 rounds. Uh, and uh, it's really a weapon of war. Forty rounds. One of the things I was proud of rounds. years ago when I was in the Senate, I was able to get these uh, weapons uh, and the size of magazines outlawed. That got changed. It got overruled. But I don't see any rationale why there should be such a weapon able to be purchased. It doesn't violate anybody's Second Amendment rights to deny that. All right, we'll get to the violating Second Amendment rights later. What he's talking about is the 1994 uh, Clinton crime bill. And long story short, the Obama DOJ determined that the Clinton crime bill didn't have any effect on gun crime. In fact, there's some evidence that gun crime got worse during the ban on so-called assault weapons like Joe Biden likes to talk about. Also, it didn't ban standard capacity magazines. It just said you couldn't make them anymore. If you found one that was made before the ban, you could still buy it and you could still own it. All right, moving on. And everybody that I grew up with either became a cop, a firefighter, or a priest. I wasn't qualified for any of them, so here I am. <laughs> not qualified to be president uh, but, either, Bozo. Uh, I admire the hell out of all of you. I really do. It's not, I'm not being solicitous. I mean it sincerely. And so I'm also calling for increased funding for the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and the U.S. Marshal's offices. I'm confident if we fund these programs, we'll see a reduction in violence. In the next year's budget, I'm also going to try to double down on this investment. So as we've talked about in a couple different videos, they want to double the ATF's funding. Right now, it's at about $1.4 billion, and they want to dump in another $1.5 billion for some of these uh, anti-gun uh, plans they have, especially in New York. The thing I picked up on was he says he's confident that if he doubles the funding, crime will go down. Where's his evidence? He doesn't cite any, and he won't. That includes taking on and shutting down rogue gun dealers. At, uh, and it's, it's, it's about doing background checks, it's as well as outright selling, uh, uh, of that, making sure the people who are not allowed to have a gun don't get the gun in the first place. And again, for any of the press, any of the press listening, this doesn't violate anybody's Second Amendment right. There's no violation of a Second Amendment right. We talk like there's no amendment that's absolute. When the amendment was passed, it didn't say anybody can own a gun and any kind of gun and any kind of weapon. You couldn't buy a cannon in when the, this, this uh, amendment was passed. And so no reason why you should be able to buy certain assault weapons. But that's another issue. All right. Let's go over the cannon thing most importantly. Obviously, he's wrong. You could buy cannons then. Hell, you could buy cannons now. My view on this is that us getting wrapped up talking about whether or not the history allows us to buy a cannon is the wrong argument to have. All we need to do is just show him and show everybody else every other news article calling him out for how wrong that statement is. What's important to me is that when somebody says, you couldn't buy a cannon at the time of the founding, we immediately pivot and say, you know what? Nobody we know is talking about buying a cannon because the purpose of the Second Amendment isn't about cannons. It's about parity with the government. It's about safety. And one more thing about this clip, and I wanna draw on something that John Lott, he's a statistician that really likes to focus on gun statistics, wrote. And I'll read right from a, an article that he just published recently. We'll have it linked down below. He says, when Biden talks about 5% of the gun dealers selling 90% of the guns found at crime scenes, he ignores that 5% sell over 90%. He ignores that less than 0.1% of guns are used in a crime in any given year and that guns are used to stop crime about five times more frequently than they are used to commit it. What Lot is saying here is it doesn't matter this st fake statistic that Biden is bringing up that 5% of the gun dealers sell 90% of the guns found at crime scenes. It's because a small minority of gun dealers sell most of the guns. So mathematically, that makes sense. Justice Department, this spring, the Justice Department will issue a final rule to regulate these so-called ghost guns. So GOA has always been opposed to any kind of government law or even an agency regulation that didn't let you build a firearm at home. We're obviously opposed to anything that infringes upon that right. The ghost gun question, as he likes to call it, or being able to make a, a gun in your own home, 
All of this became much more important after we found out that the ATF has over a billion records in a registry. If he can get rid of unserialized firearms, guess what's gonna happen? They're all gonna get dumped into a national registry. The fight, from his perspective, on unserialized guns is all about making the national registry bigger. And as we've said before, there's no reason for a national registry unless you want to confiscate guns. It's going to solve the problem. And I'm eager to hear more about that progress. And folks, the second thing I want to point out is I want to help every major city follow New York's lead to put together partnerships like this one you put together and meet on a daily basis. Every day here in New York City, like this meeting today, federal, state, and local enforcement meet to share intelligence about arrests, shootings from the day before, and work to take those shooters off the street as quickly as possible. Just look around. This was what the partnership looks like, and this is what you put together. He wants more cities following New York's lead. New York is getting more violent, and the numbers bear that out. One thing to think about, and again, I'm going to refer to that article by John Lott that I talked about. Biden's gun-first approach to violent crime ignores some basic facts, and here's what John Lott says on that. Biden's gun-first approach ignores a basic fact. Over 92% of violent crimes in America do not involve firearms. While violent crimes reported to police rose 5% in 2020, gun crimes actually fell by 27%. And what Lott actually attributes that to is that in the last two years or so, the more people have been buying guns, the safer we all are in general. Plan to fight crime to keep our community safe by hiring more police officers for community policing and paying police overtime and purchasing gun fighting technologies like the technology that hears, locates gunshots so there can be immediate response because you know exactly where it came from. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there. What he's talking about is a technology like Shot Spotter. You guys are gonna to have to go to a video we did way back when where I interviewed Tom Jones. He was a guy who did a lot of really good work uncovering David Chipman's past, what he did professionally, what he did personally. And David Chipman was heavily involved in pushing Shot Spotter, but they eventually abandoned it because they said it doesn't work. Police agencies throughout the country are rejecting it. But Congress needs to do its part too pass universal background checks, ban assault weapons and high-capacity magazines, close loopholes that keep out of the hands of domestic abusers weapons, repeal the liability shield for gun manufacturers. Okay, well, he wants Congress to pass universal background checks. Congress doesn't want to do that because the American people don't want it. Every time UBCs come up for a vote, they fail. As we said earlier, we tried that in the 90s and it had no effect on crime. What he's really referring to there when he's talking about closing the loopholes on domestic abusers, he's talking about something that's become pretty popular called the boyfriend loophole. It doesn't exist, but it's a thing that they're using to shoehorn in more gun control. The only question I have is that right now, members in the Senate are negotiating the Violence Against Women Act, which supposedly is gonna have a provision in there to close the boyfriend loophole. So I wanna know if the provision on the boyfriend loophole isn't in the final version, does that mean Joe Biden doesn't have any control about what's going on? Here's the simplest explanation of how to understand the liability shield for gun manufacturers. If you purchase a gun and you shoot it and it explodes in your hand, you can sue a gun manufacturer because that gun is defective and not doing what it's supposed to do. There is no difference between there and what you can do to a car manufacturer. If your car explodes when you turn it on, you can sue the car maker. But there is no special protection as such for being able to sue or not sue a gun manufacturer if somebody takes a functioning firearm and uses it to commit a crime. America, that is exempted from being able to be sued by the public. Only one. Imagine had that been the way with cigarette manufacturers. Where the hell would we, where, would, where the heck would we be? We'd be in tough shape. No dum-dum. They could sue cigarette manufacturers because they were lying to people about what cigarettes were doing. The products being produced by gun manufacturers aren't defective. Where the hell would we, where, would, where the heck would we be? We'd be in tough shape. Why gun he's, manufacturers? He's just lying here. Because of the power of their lobbying ability. It's got to end. And they got to be held Not quite as strong as the lobbying ability they, they of banks or credit cards, which owned Joe Biden Folks, while he was a senator. You know, it's the only industry in America, as I said, that's exempt from being sued. 
And I think I find it to be outrageous. And folks, these laws, if we are able to pass them, are going to save lives. And more equally importantly, help you protect one another and protect yourself. Put law enforcement in a more a safer circumstance. Well, there's much more to say, but I've probably already said so, too much. <laughs> Yeah, you said too much the moment after you announced you were running for president. First off, he's got that backwards. You don't write an executive order, then pass a law. Congress is the one that's supposed to speak here, not the president with an executive order and a pen. This just goes to show how completely corrupt these guys are. Look, before we close out on this video, there's just one more thing I want to read from actually another article written by John Lott. A recent Gallup poll shows that 40% of Democrats want a complete ban on civilian ownership of handguns. So when we talk about a registry leading to confiscation. The numbers don't lie. We're not joking. And then when we break news about the ATF having a billion records, it's right there. The facts don't lie. Thankfully, we're working with a lot of really awesome members of Congress that aren't gonna let go of this one, but we need all of you to get involved as well. And we say it in every video, use the link in our description below. Talk to your congressman, talk to your senator. We've got a video coming out. I don't know if it's before or after this one, that gives you some helpful tips about how to talk to congressional candidates. And that also applies to incumbents who are running for their seat again. This roundtable that he had on condemning the Second Amendment, which is what this was, is sort of a last ditch effort, if you ask me. And I think the reason he had this roundtable is because Biden has been, in most ways, a failure. He couldn't pass his Build Back Better agenda. His voting rights reform isn't gonna cross the finish line. So he's basically throwing a Hail Mary pass to keep his coalition together. So at least those committed voters will come out and vote for him and his coalition. Anyway, that's going to be it for today. You guys have been awesome as far as liking our videos and subscribing. We've really blown up lately and I appreciate that so much. So please, if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do that. It helps us a lot. Let me know in the comments what you think about the round table and who your dream team of members of Congress would be to have their own round table about the Second Amendment. Could be past or present members. All right, we'll see ya.